Hey everybody, RetroPie Guy here. Today we're going to go over how to set up a racing wheel controller with RetroPie. I was recently on eBay and came across an old Xbox 360 racing wheel controller for just 25 bucks, so I thought uh, maybe this was something that could work with RetroPie. I'd never seen it done before, but figured it's worth a shot. Worst case, you know, I just turn around, relist it on eBay, and get my money back. So I was surprised to find out that it actually works quite well with RetroPie on the older racing games. So today we're going to go over exactly how to set this up. So regardless of the branding, the configuration process is pretty much the same, though the buttons on the wheel may differ on different models. So we're going to jump into this and I'll show you exactly how we go about setting this up. All right, so let's get started mapping this particular controller. Again, this is the 360 um, racing wheel controller. There are a whole bunch of different racing wheels available. Um, I know Amazon has a whole bunch and they're much newer than this particular one, so they probably work better too. So first thing that we need to do on here is we're going to need a USB breakaway cable. So how that works is it actually just twists onto the end of this. You have this end here. Go ahead, twist these on like so. You now have that USB end here. This is going to plug directly into your Raspberry Pi. So we plug that into the Raspberry Pi uh, USB port. So next thing we need to do is we need to go to our main menu. You can use either your gamepad controller or your keyboard, whichever you have hooked up. So hit the start button, jump down now, once you're in main menu to configure input, we'll select that. It'll ask you, are you sure you want to configure input? Go ahead and select yes. Um, since our racing wheel is plugged in through the USB port, you'll see on our screen um, under configure input that it says one gamepad detected. Uh, it might say two if you have another gamepad controller connected as well. Um, once you do that, you want to just hold down any button on your racing wheel controller here, and it'll jump you into your mapping page. All right, so now what we need to do here is we need to hit all the buttons here that the screen asks for, but we don't need to hit every single one. So we are actually gonna configure our wheel here as the D-pad. However, we don't need to utilize the up or down functions on the um, actual turning of the wheel. We're gonna do that with the little D-pad that you see in the center of our steering wheel. So for the first option, which is D-pad up, we'll hit the D-pad up option. For D-pad down, we'll hit the D-pad down option. And now for left and right, we're actually gonna to have to turn this wheel. So this can get a little bit funny. Usually, I find when I do this, it actually maps both of them at the same time because they basically are the same function. They're just different directions of the same function. So we can crank this wheel left because the first option is left. And you can see that it actually jumps to both of those. So you can see D-pad left has this AXIS zero plus and D-pad right has AXIS zero minus, which is good. As long as they're different and you have both of them there, it doesn't matter which order you have on here because we're gonna go into RetroArch and we're gonna actually alter this um, in a lot of games anyways. So it really doesn't make any difference. Um, again, like I said, when you turn this one direction, it actually picks up the direction you're pulling. And then as you let it go, it picks up the other direction. So it does both of them right in a row like that. Um, so next thing we need to do is we need to hit our start button. You're gonna have your start button right here on the wheel. So we'll hit that um, select. I just do as this uh, back button that's right underneath the start button, just because I like to have those together like they would be on a typical gamepad controller. Now for A and B, we're actually gonna utilize our pedals, which I have right over here. So for the A button, we're gonna utilize our gas pedal. So we'll hit that. And then for B, we're gonna use the brake. We'll hit that. So now we'll go back to over here to our wheel. And for the X option, we have an X button on here, so might as well just do that option. Same for Y, we have the Y, so do it as Y. And now for left shoulder, we have these shoulder buttons here. Depending on what model you're using, you might have these, you might not. Um, same for the right. And now for left trigger, you can go and utilize some of these additional buttons on here. Um, most of the games that I'm gonna be playing don't include trigger options for racing games. So I'm not even gonna bother with that. I'm just gonna hold down any button I've already configured to skip that. So now I can do the same thing with right trigger, left thumb and right thumb we don't need. Same thing with the analog, up, down, left, right. For both sides, left and right, we can skip all these. So again, I'm just gonna keep pulling this left uh, shoulder button to bypass all of these. And we wanna go down to the hotkey enable option. Now our hotkey, as you probably know, is going to be the button that we hit in order to exit a game. So I'm going to utilize one of these extra buttons that I'm not going to 
uh, worry about hitting in gameplay. So I'm going to utilize this LSB button over here on the left hand side. So I'm going to select that and now when you're in a game you're going to exit games by using that button and the start button together. So you'd actually just hit both of these if you're in a game and you want to exit back to your uh, game collection menu. You just hit both of these together, it'll take you right out of that game and bring you back to your collection. So we're all set with mapping here. In order to hit OK, we're just going to go and hit our A button to confirm all this, which is our gas pedal. You see that that loads for a second, and then we are back to our main menu. So we can jump out of our main menu. I recommend navigating with your uh, regular gamepad controller or your keyboard, whatever you have set up on RetroPie. You can use the steering wheel, but it's very sensitive. You typically will end up, you know, not just going uh, one collection over to the left or right, you'll end up, you know, jumping a bunch over. So if I do this for you, I'll show you real quick. It, you can see it just jumped me um, probably three or four uh, collections over. So it's not super easy to navigate with in the menus. So again, gamepad controller or keyboard is probably the way to go. So we're going to go and jump into a game now, and I'm going to show you how games work on here and how we can alter some of the retro arch settings. All right, so I wanna jump into OutRun on here. Um, we'll quickly demo this a little bit, and then we'll actually go into RetroArch, and I'll show you exactly how we can customize our settings. Um, from time to time, when we go into some of these racing games, the configurations don't always pull over, and we have to go in and customize and edit those a little bit. So we'll see if this works. First thing we wanna do is test it out first. So we'll jump into OutRun. So I did uh, mute this game just so we can go through this without extra noise. So start button's working. So it looks like everything is probably going to work out today. So I'm hitting the gas pedal with my foot. I'm navigating forward. So let's just try to steer a little bit here. Um, left goes left right into the stands in that case. So um, now sometimes the brake does act as the gas pedal with some of these and vice versa. Same with steering. Sometimes you steer left and you go right. So if that's the case, we have to go into RetroArch. Now in order to go into RetroArch here, I'm gonna show you how to do that. We have to hit our hotkey and X at the same time. So today we mapped this LSB button here as our hotkey. So we're gonna hold that and X at the same time. You'll see that the screen jumps into this quick menu. So now we have to hit the B button to jump into our regular main menu. You can either hit your brake pedal or you can hit your gamepad controller or keyboards um, back button. So we'll navigate there, you come into this main menu. From the main menu, we're gonna drop, we're gonna drop down to settings, select settings, and we'll drop down to the fourth option down, which is input. So a couple things I wanna show you here. First thing is, um, is the analog sensitivity. If you find that your steering wheel is too sensitive or not sensitive enough, you can jump in here and you can see that there's different numbers. They go up and down. You can adjust this accordingly to whether you want to make it less sensitive or more sensitive. Um, I do find for this game that uh, the default setting of one here does work pretty well. So I'm just gonna back out of that with the B button. Now we're gonna drop down to port one binds, and this is going to open up our mapping options here. So you can see all of our different options. We have the B button, the A button, uh, mode, start, D-pad up, down, left, right, and then all these additional um, options here, which would be for the Sega system this is intended for. Most of those aren't really useful in this case, but let's go to the B button here. You can see, in the um, side that's kind of scrolling to the right there that it says key and then it says B. So that means that the B button is controlling this option, which is good, it matches up. And that's what we want. We wanna make sure that our options match up across here. So if you were checking on the B and it said key A, then you know that your uh, buttons are reversed and you need to go and switch those over. Now, Again, this is all working fine. I can tell that since that one's B, this one's gotta be A. So now if we did need to change this, let's say that the B was actually showing up as an A key, we would just go and select this option. It opens up this little window and we'd go and tap our brake pedal, which we're assigning as the B button. We don't need to do that today because it, they match up perfectly. So um, we already tested this game out. We know that the steering is on point, but if we, had the issue of let's say that we were steering left and the car was navigating right we would just go down to d-pad left and it would likely if that was the case 
um, where it says left and where it scrolls over here under key, it would probably say right. So then we know that they're uh, misconfigured and we need to just manually change those. Again, same thing. We would select that option. We would turn our wheel left and that would then change it from the right setting to the left setting. Again, today everything's working out fine, so we don't have to worry about that. Once changes are made, you do have to save them, so you'd have to go up here and hit the Save Auto Config option. I'm not going to do that today, just in case I accidentally altered something in here, which I don't think I did, but um, I don't want to mess this up. So again, if you were making changes, make sure that you hit Save Auto Config, and then you're going to jump back to your game. In order to do that, you do the exact same combination that you did to get into RetroArch to begin with, which is the hotkey and X. So I'm just going to tap those together. You can see I jump right back into my game. Now, if you are making changes, I recommend restarting this. You could do that with your hotkey, which you would do with start and the LSB button in this case in order to jump back to our main collection. And then we could jump right back into this again. So that's going to do it for today. Um, again, some games you do have to go through RetroArch and kind of tweak the um, settings a little bit. Um, I do find that these particular controllers work better on the older racing games, um, on like some of the newer ones on N64 and um, PlayStation. I find that this is just a little bit too unreliable to play those games. Um, and that's in my experience. I really didn't play around with this a whole lot. This was all kind of just a um, test that kind of worked out. So I didn't get too far into this. I'm sure you could go through some of those sensitivity settings and make some alterations to make it play much better. Um, you could probably play the, you know, Mario Kart and stuff like that with this as well. But those games do have the analog stick navigating versus a D-pad. So they're going to be prone to more sensitivity. So just, um, you know, be prepared to kind of go in and have to tweak those a pretty good amount. Um, now this particular wheel controller here is an older one. It's from the Xbox 360. There are newer ones available. I think they're about $100 or so on Amazon. Um, they do plug into the USB port, so they will work, and they're probably much better than this one just because they're newer. Um, the sensitivity issues are probably worked out a little bit better by now versus this, which is, you know, several years um, older. So um, wow. I'm going to jump into this game again with some sound. We'll do a brief little demo, and then that'll be it for this video. Get ready. All right, so you can see I'm not really great at this game, but it actually drives really smoothly. Um, I'm kind of playing this at a weird angle for filming today too, so I'm, I am gonna make some excuses for myself, but um, it is a really smooth uh, ride on here. It actually plays just like the original arcade on here. It's actually got the same kind of range of motion on this particular uh, wheel, so I really like it. I think it's a great addition if you're into these older racing games. Uh, I think you really have some fun with this you know, show the kids exactly how this works. Um, I think it'll be great family fun for everybody. So that's gonna do it for today. If you found this video helpful, um, please give us a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
we do a whole bunch of gameplay demos um product reviews tutorials all types of different stuff on here so definitely um subscribe here and then check us out online on our website www.retropieguy.com thanks for watching